Johnny Johnny, yes, Papa. Killing people, no, Papa. Show me your hands. Ha ha ha. I am Klaus. John, I am Klaus. I am Klaus. Jesus, I guess this guy has an obsession with Disney. I thought he would be saying I'm Klaus one more time to the face of John Wick before leaving. <laughs> Why did the director decide to make Scott Atkins so fat in the movie? Is that because a ripped and shredded Uri Boyka would be too much for John Wick to handle? By the way, this is exactly how my dentist would look at me upon finding out that I had no insurance at all. Exciting, yeah. <laughs> By the way, this guy was so annoying that even the dog was finding it hard to tolerate his devil love. One thinks he can buy his way out. Why did Killer say that Mr. Nobody wanted to buy his way out? Well, if you have missed the dialogue, let me remind you that Mr. Nobody indirectly asked Killer to put John Wick in a pine box in exchange of some money. That's why Killer Harkon said that. The winner decides who lives and who does not. All right. This guy is so unlucky. In his previous life, he lost his knee to an American boxer and now he has got shot in the ass and then he died. I wish he gets reincarnated to this planet and becomes the most complete fighter in the world. Johnny literally has 50% less fall damage than any other character in the movie. He fell from that 30 feet high compound and then he started fighting. He fell down on the stairs like a ping pong ball for over 15 seconds. Alright, that's enough. He fell from the window of another building and yet he was holding the gun super tight. In chapter 3, he even fell from the rooftop balcony of the Continental Hotel and yet he survived. This guy has more resistance than Tommy Versetti. The f And yeah, there's another guy like him, Dolor. He got hit by a car at a speed of around 25 miles and then he came back in no time. He got shot down, fell on the ground, and then he was back within a minute. Exactly what kind of crack he took before leaving the home. I guess he took the same juice he used to take in his past life. I feel good. But I feel better after my chocolate. If these two people can survive all of these things, I definitely want my boyka to be back. This is unfair. The first time when he said that, I thought the name of the dog was nuts until I saw this. Oh yeah, Winston just walked into the room for a straight 25 seconds. If the scene would escalate 5 more seconds, I would definitely believe that the room was a treadmill and he was exercising on it. Sunrise. Yeah. When Marquis was thinking about getting the competition done at sunrise, John Wick was ready to get it done right away. There's a reason why his confidence can be justified. Even inside the church, John literally told Cain that he did not come to say goodbye to his wife, but rather came to say hello. Saying goodbyes? Saying hello. I wonder what he did in the past to retire from the high table, the last job of Baba Yaga killing the boogeyman. If a prequel is not made on the prime time of John Wick, it would be a straight up betrayal with us. Weapons. Blades. Do you guys know exactly why Marquis decided to choose blades instead of pistols? Because Kane is blind and not so good with guns other than running blades. He has to shoot a lot of times to get one confirmed kill. There's only John Wick, the killer. And he's going to kill you. I thought John would be saying, yeah. 
You think your wife can hear you? No. Why bother? Maybe I'm wrong. This testimony is an evidence that John is neither an atheist nor a religious guy. He's an agnostic and it makes sense because he never had the opportunity to delve into the world of spirituality because of his inconvenient circumstances in life. After my daughter was born, I want to leave this life. This dialogue is an indirect evidence that the wife of Cain died during the childbirth and that's why he came to the church. Maybe his daughter Mia is the gift from his wife the exact same way Daisy was the gift from Helen. The first time when I heard that instrumental in the background, I thought it was going to be Ava Maria, but then it turned out to be something else to my surprise. This subway scene reminds me of the shabby man with multiple watches in his hand from the Matrix, remember? After all, a man has to look his best when it's time to get married. Or buried. Yo, what the fuck? There are three types of men in this world. Those who have something to live for. Those who have something to die for. And those who have something to kill for. John Wick has none of these things. He is but a ghost in search of a graveyard. But the blind man. Well, he has all three. A guy who has nothing to lose in his life can have one of the two endings. Either he's gonna become a psycho as far or he will just simply give up on his life even before trying. And guess what John Wick is? For all you boppers out there in the city of lights. For all you street people with a near for the action. I don't know if I should say that, but these lips are so therapeutic to watch talking. Can you imagine these lips doing something else for you other than talking? You nasty people. I'm going to need a gun. Ah, uh, I remember something. You want a war? Or do you want to just give me a gun? <laughs> After getting hit by the car at this much of speed, this dog was not supposed to be getting up and beginning to bark, and yet, it was possible and you know why? Because the director realized from the very beginning that an injured dog would piss off a lot of dog lovers who came to watch the movie. If you love John Wick, then there is a higher possibility that you also love dogs. I don't know why but my intrusive mind told me that this guy would come out from the dark instead of the dog. <laughs> Is it not weird that nobody in the movie can get a precise headshot even during the close counters except for John Wick himself? Oh I forgot, it's a Hollywood movie. I need you to get to the top of those stairs, John. Did you guys wonder why Kane decided to help John Wick participate in the duel? He could have just put a single bullet in the head of Johnny and the game would be over. His daughter would be safe and he would receive freedom for the rest of his life. But he was raising a guilt inside his mind for killing Koji and that's why he wanted to let Johnny have a fair fight to get his freedom. <laughs> When the dog was biting Dolor, why did he just keep his both hands aside instead of trying to get rid of the dog? Is there any way he was secretly enjoying the crunchy bites? I guess the script writer didn't focus enough on the defense mechanism of these people. Let me show you another example. Johnny was breaking the head of this guy with a pair of nunchuck and he was doing nothing to push Johnny back with his both hands. I guess the script writer just wanted them to come to the screen like an NPC and then just die. Arrogant asshole. He didn't shoot. Consequences. Did you guys feel confused on how the death of the Marquis was covered up? 
Let me explain. According to the law, John and Cain can fire three bullets in the duet. If both of them remain alive in the end, whoever failed to shoot the remaining bullet will get another opportunity to defend himself. As John did not shoot Cain in the third phase, he had the golden opportunity to get another chance against Cain. But this asshole took the gun from the hand of Cain to shoot Johnny instead of Cain and John decided to utilize that golden opportunity. In short, the Marquis died on behalf of Cain. Jonathan? Will they take me home? This is the same thing that Johnny also desired in the end of John Week 1. Come on, John. Let's go home. In the end of chapter 1, Johnny laid down to his left side on the ground and also in the end of chapter 4, he laid down to the same side on the stairs. The only difference is that he won't be opening his eyes anymore. Why does Winston have the tattoo of Rusko Roma in his hand? Did he used to be a member of that family? How you do anything is how you do everything. This is not true. That's not how a human mind works. Our mind works differently based on various circumstances. For example, a woman who is highly successful and decisive in a career might suffer from indecisiveness in her personal and marital life. Hollywood couples are the perfect example of that. A businessman might be very rational in decision making in his company but very dogmatic in his personal life. Look at Steve Jobs. This guy literally could have saved his ass but instead of undergoing an immediate cancer surgery, he went vegan and started doing treatments based on his own perception. In the end, the cancer spread too much and it was too late for him to survive. One of the biggest genius inventors or not pathetically gave his life to a narcissistic dogma. 